Hi, I'm Mike Connor with Bueller Service Department. Uh, we're here today to talk a little bit about uh, calibration of harness testers. Um, I've been here with Bueller now 26 years and in charge of all of our ISO accreditation and of course calibration of harness testers. But we're going to walk through a little bit uh, about direct and indirect verification and what that means. We are accredited by A2LA, which is American Association for Laboratory Accreditation for ISO 17025, the current 2017 standard, for all hardness in the ISO and the ASTM um, compliance standards. So one of the first calibrations I'd like to talk about today is the ASTM E1820 standard, which is um, calibration of Rockwell hardness testers, it includes Rockwell and the superficial. Um, normally, um, a calibration uh, consists of uh, three types. One is uh, the daily, uh, the second is the indirect method, and then the third, the more complicated of the three, is the direct verification of the uh, Rockwell tester. Um, the one that you're normally used to is the, is the daily verification, which you do either prior to use of the machine or you have some period that you normally check it. Um, and that's obviously done with test blocks that you have in-house that will um, correlate to whatever scale and whatever hardness measurement you're going to make. So I'll just show you. This is uh, our R574 Deadweight Rockwell. Uh, it is the current production model. And I'm just going to show you a quick HRC test. The machine will load up. It will switch and change loads. And then it will actually give us a hardness number here. It's in around the mid-60 range for HRC, so 61.5. So the first portion of the direct verification, which again is the more complicated of the three, is the hysteresis test. And you can do this on your machine without any help from Bueller, but this is the way I normally set it up. I put the anvil upside down so the post is sticking up. Uh, the Rockwell scale for HRC goes from 0 to 100 with the usable scale between 20 and 70. So with this particular test, we're actually gonna make a non-indent. So I would expect these numbers to be really close to 100. So let's see what we get on this machine. So it's gonna apply the load just like normal, but it's actually not gonna penetrate the anvil. So I would expect, again, this number to be very close to 100. Um, so the first one is 98.9. This is done consecutively 10 times in a row, and you average the last three, and that, again, that number should be 99 or better to comply with the standard. So now the second one should start to approach that 99. So now we're at 99 and a quarter. So this machine would be compliant, although I would capture the, the last of the um, eight readings. The next portion of the E18 standard is verification of the test forces uh, that the Rockwell machine puts out. In this case, we're going to check the HRC scale, which is a 10 kilo preload, a major load of 150 kilo, and then back to the 10 kilo. And we'll capture those numbers here on my software. The so first thing we do is we'll wind up the tester. Um, we're going to capture a zero point. About 10 grams of force there from the cable. And then we'll start the machine. We'll capture the first one, capture the second force, and then we go back to the minor load again and we capture that one. We'll do that one more time. Remove the load. We're going to capture a zero point. Start the machine. Capture the first minor load. Capture the major load, and then back to the minor. And that's how we verify the test forces for HRC scale. The next section of the E18 standard is verification of the depth measuring device. Uh, in this particular machine, it's a, a direct linear encoder that sits right on top of the indenter plunger. And I have a special tool here called a CalRock which is a high precision electronic encoder that we can move the gauge and monitor the travel in the machine and for the standard. Well, first I'm gonna do is zero out my, my tool. I'm gonna zero out the machine. And 
then I'll move the device up approximately 50 microns and we'll take a look at the result. Oh, there's my 50 and you can see that the gauge moved to 50.2 correlates to our 50 microns on the machine, so this is in compliance to the standard. With the other tester, the RB2000, we measure the depth calibration in a slightly different technique. We use calibrated gauge blocks, and the reason we do this is because the actuator is what moves on this rather than the part. So we have developed a slightly different technique along with some software in the machine that will allow us to measure the differences between these two gauge blocks. So I go into the gauge block test method. I line up my first gauge block with a blunt indenter and I click on establish reference. It will go down, it will touch the surface of that gauge block and record a zero value. Then I change out the gauge block to a 1.05 millimeter gauge block, so the difference being 50 microns, and I tell it to measure that gauge block goes down, contacts the surface, and should give me a value of right around 50 micron. And you can see this machine is reading exactly 50. The next section of the E18 standard is timing. Although it's not required as part of a normal direct verification, uh, due to the NATCAP advisory that came out uh, a couple of years ago, we've been doing it on site for customers so that they have paperwork showing that the timing is compliant. So here's the technique. We use a load cell and a stopwatch, and um, this parameter I'm just going to measure the ramp up from minor load to major load, and then before it releases the major load. So we go up to minor, as soon as we see it change to major, start the stopwatch, we hold it until it starts to back off, and the spec is two seconds to eight seconds and this machine is at 5.29. The last section of the E18 standard is once all the parameters has passed the direct verification, uh, hysteresis, forces, timing, depth measurement, then you have to go back and recalibrate all of the scales that the customer would normally use with three test blocks per scale and the customer's uh, standard indenter process is the same as before, we just have to repeat it, showing the machine um, is still maintaining compliance. Um, moving on to E92, which is the ASTM standard for micro-indentation testing, there are two parameters we need to verify uh, using the direct method. One is the measuring device and the other is the forces. Um, we can also do indenter contact velocity, but in general it's not required as part of a normal direct. So here we have, uh, for the purposes of the video, it's a little easier to show you on the screen. So we bring up the measuring tool and with a glass stage micrometer on the microscope, we can measure this distance right here, which is uh, 100 microns. It's coming in at 100.5. We would do this for each of the objectives to verify that each of them measures correctly um, for each of those uh, zoom steps. The next section of the E92 standard is to verify the forces. So in this case for the video we're showing a scale which is a very easy way to check. I'm going to set it at NOOP 200 grams. I'll tell the machine to make an indent. And then we'll take a look at the output of the scale. So right now it's sitting at 199 grams, which is in compliance to the standard. The last standard we're going to talk about today is ASTM E10 for Brunel hardness. This particular machine is a UH4750. It's a universal hardness tester which does Rockwell, Micro and Macro Vickers, as well as Brunel. So the only thing we need to check for E10 would be the force. Uh, on this particular machine and then the measuring device. So the technique is the same as with E18 and um, also for E92 for verification that the camera would measure correctly. And that's it for E10.